Max Armor 2015, I'm joined by the desk of uh, Orange as well as Sir Christian, two players which uh, you might be hearing their names more often nowadays, both of them qualifying for events. The last time you saw Sir Christian was in IAM Katowice, where you defeated Strifeco to get to the top eight. Yeah. And then Orange, of course, won Katowice yeah. and also Sea Story Cup thereafter, shortly being picked up by Archon during exactly. that entire process. How are you guys doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. I've uh, been here for a couple of hours now, feeling great, looking yeah. looking to see how my friends are doing. Listening to your own voice on your commercials. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't That's that right. just the best? Yeah. Well, you really liked Mario Kart. Mario Kart? Better Mario than Kart. Hearthstone? I'll, uh, I, I, I think I picked Hearthstone over Mario Kart. All right. Or, okay. well, seeing how it went yesterday, maybe I should go for a Mario Kart career. Who knows? Both of them are heavily <laughs> RNG dependent. Let's be real. If you oh get the yeah. blue shell, I mean, that's just really overpowered. It's pretty OP. It's oh yeah. pretty OP. How are you doing, Christian? Uh, pretty good. I'm here... Pretty much the same. Watching friends play, hanging out. Lost yesterday, so. Yeah. Well, let's t talk a little bit to me about yourself. Uh, you're a player from Iceland, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, What's that like? Um, in general, I mean, do you even have like a strong gaming community in Iceland? Well, not really. Mm -hmm. There, there were a couple events a few months back, and there's like a League of Legends community, but there's not much else, so. All right, cool, cool. Well, uh, you know, glad that you're able to make it out here in Sweden. Yeah. Not too far of a trip, I think, compared to some of these other people flying from Asia or Americas. Yeah. Uh, so you've, you've had a harder. pretty easy adjustment there. But for these guys uh, coming up on stream, we have Faramir versus Hoy. Uh, these two players have been waiting for quite some time. We apologize for the delay. We had some audio issues with the mics, uh, at least on our side, so we had to figure it out. But we're about to get underway, and uh, we're about to see what's going to happen because both these players, I believe, are three and one. Yeah. And the loser of this ends up losing their chance to go to the top eight. The winner, of course, moves on to the next round with his hope still alive. And I want to see what's going to happen here, because both of them have a lot to prove. Yeah, uh, they sure do. Hoy, we've only seen at the two latest Via Game House Cups, where he won Via Game House Cup 2, and he got through to the top eight in the third one. So in, in the tournaments we've seen him, uh, Hoy has been doing great. But he's still like... Uh, I st from talking to him myself, uh, I think that he still uh, feels the need to like prove himself, and uh, what better way would there be than like trying to win this huge tournament that we have here? Right. Yeah. I mean, people often forget that you know, to, in order to prove yourself in the first place, you have to come to the open qualifier portions, and that's what Hoy did. But was it a one-time fluke? I mean, that's uh, something that he has to address it himself, and he wants to win so that way he can prove it wasn't. Yeah. Can we uh, talk about Hoy's decks? Because I've heard that he has a Control Paladin, actually. No uh, which, way. Which we haven't seen in a while. Control Paladin. Yeah. Like, like, it, like it's not even mid-range, it's Control. It's slow. So he was playing Stan Sifka yesterday off-camera, and he told me a story about how he never attacked him. He f so Stan Sifka was playing Giant's Mage, and he lay on hands at Stan Sifka to put him back at 30 so he couldn't <laughs> play Bolton Giants. That's hilarious. I would have loved to see that game. But it also sounds like a really complicated and slow game, too. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. And it certainly doesn't sound like anything that the mid-range paladins that we're used to see are capable of. Yeah, uh, so I'm sure. actually really excited to see that deck wow. coming up. But at the match we have now, we have Druid versus uh, what seems to be like quite a standard hand block. Uh, wh what do you guys think about this matchup? Uh, yeah, a lot of people peg hand lock as the as the deck that's always on the defensive and weak to Druid, because Druid can be putting on a lot of pressure, especially with two Savage Roars and two Force of Natures. Um, I mean, there was a period of time where people felt like Druid was great against, or sorry, uh, Handlock was great against Druid, because oh, yeah. they couldn't answer threats. They only had one big game hunter. But when Druid started putting a lot of combo pressure on, it's just like anything else. Druid yeah. might get, sh or Handlock might get shoved out of the game. Cards like Piloted Shredder actually matter a lot in this matchup, because even if you kill them, they come back and it's so much worse than Druid's old four drops. Yeah. Oh yikes! Hey, it, it's <laughs> it, it's a big thing too. Like it pri it before GVG, uh, the Druids used to play Shieldwind Getty uh, instead of Piloted Shredder. Yeah, exactly. And like it, Pilot Shredder is so much better at trading up with Giants too, which is super relevant. Uh, yeah, you can hit a Giant with a Shredder and then swipe the Giant, and yeah. that's just so good for you. Oh, and and you still have something left. The thing with uh, exactly. The thing that happened with the shield one yeah, day was that you just like got left with nothing, oh. and just having a small two drops like really relevant to such a deck as Druid because we're double savage roar. About this game, I actually think um, uh, you know you may have noticed Farmir missed his four drop, which is so huge in this matchup. Game's over, by the way. 
if you just drew the call Salvador, <laughs> oh. <laughs> the game's over. But yeah, go keep 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 on going. Just yeah, Chris. because uh, on turn four, Faramir didn't have a play. Even though Hoei actually has keeper for a potential Twilight Drake, he didn't have. He would have still traded and something, but he didn't have anything, and that's really bad for Handlock. Right. I mean, you did have to kill the Shade, but in, it's just like you said, there wasn't any uh, ability to seize the board. And Farmir did have a couple of choices here. He had the opportunity to go for a Siphon Soul on the, the Thorson, but he chose to play Th uh, his own Thorson very quickly. And so I, I guess, obviously, considering that, he ended up dying and paying the price for it, but... Do that you think he, he played that turn too quickly, or was well, that the right choice? Well, that's a much more ambitious play, but I don't think Siphon Soling and leaving Hoei with minions is a winning play. Yeah. Okay, uh, fair enough. I, I like to play too. Like, uh, Faramir's in a really bad spot. He has to play to win. Like, he's not playing not to lose, which is it. And uh, I think the chances to make him win the game is that, like, Hoei is on, like, a lot of air and just minions. Uh, yeah. If and if you play Emperor, you can... Let's so say, uh, advantage of the board that let's way. say Hoey's hand there is maybe Belcher, Lores, Wild Growth even. Something like that. That that's when Faramir can seize back the initiative with the Tharsan. And even though he ended up having the burst damage, I think it was still correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think you just look past it because Faramir did win the first game, so the series is tied one to one. Yeah. That was very quick, and he immediately queues up the patron. Or is he playing Patron? I think he is. We saw Farmer before. Uh, um, Hoei queues up Paladin. Oh, so, so we get so to see ambitious. the con control Paladin versus the Patron Warrior. What do you guys think about this? I, I would feel like this is, would, should be a really bad matchup for the Paladin. I then mean, again, I'm, I might be wrong here. See, the thing is, people always told me that the Paladin struggles against... Oh, it's not a Patron Oh, warrior. this is not warrior. Patron. Oh, well, Control Paladin versus Control Warrior. Well, in that case... What year is it? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, well, you mean, if you asked me six months ago when BlizzCon was still going on, then yeah, maybe you'd see this matchup, but generally speaking, people really phased out Control Paladin for a long time. Yeah. Even when Gamas vs. No One came out, Control Paladin definitely got an injection of life, but it was mid-range Paladin that was taking the, the Yeah, the because mini bot and Muster are really good at pressuring your opponents, and that's not what Hoey's looking to do here, though. He's going to hit the hero power button a lot. Uh, yeah. I mean, as the game goes on. Do you, do you minibot or hero power here? <laughs> I, I think minibot is really efficient against oh, whatever he plays. But yeah. what happens... Um, actually, no, it's fine. He has two silver champions. Yeah. So what you want to do is you don't want to ever play something where you realize your opponent can capitalize on an Acolyte, for example. Oh, ex ab absolutely. Yeah, I agree. One of the keys to the matchup is definitely like not to get it. Given them enough you cards have from better, their You have better card advantage, so you just have to not let them draw 10 cards right. off Acolyte. I mean, that I was told that this matchup is so one-sided for Control Paladin, but I think it's changed a lot since Warriors have figured out how to play it better. They realize Whirlwind effects are really powerful. They do have to time their brawl effectively. It's a lot like the Warrior vs. Shaman matchup. If the Warrior knows how to play, even though it is really hard and one-sided usually, uh, the warrior increases chances dramatically because they can save their resources accordingly. I mean, you have Death Spite in Warrior now, which is just kind of an incidental way to clear 1-1s. One and that's really nice. Back then, when you are talking about the old Control Warrior versus Control Pattern, you didn't have that at all. Right. Well, he's got no weapons at this point, so Farmir <laughs> is stuck doing the good old Hero Power Pass. Armor Hero up. Power Pass is much better in Paladin than in, <laughs> than than in, in Warrior. Warrior. Well, at least in this uh, matchup. Unl we, until you get Magni and then you have the amazing hammer smash and you gain <laughs> the armor. Now that will be epic. I don't mind doing that every turn. Oh, no. Does that, your Hero that, that Power turn into Shield Slam? I, I, I really like the con uh, the re redeployed there by Faramir. He Hero Power was considering using his Shield Slam on the Paladin to Treader just because uh, the minions that are on the board right now contest the Sludge Belcher pretty well. But he... He decided to, to uh, hold on to it because uh, he realizes that to win this matchup you actually have to get like a little bit greedy with your removal and like not use them as aggressively as you usually do. Uh, but then again we see like Hoi also in a really good way, th like just pushing a little ahead, uh, yeah. just not over committing to the board. Trying to bait out some right. form of uh, sweeper or mass removal but uh, Faramir knows that he can't really use it at this point, because uh, then uh, that's exactly what Hoi wants. The Paladin's mo best form of burst damage is True Silver, but that's still 8 damage over 2 turns, so uh, Farmer can take a bit of damage here. Absolutely. Then again, uh, except that uh, Hoi has like somewhat of a 
weak turn here. He has like so many good threats in his hand that I don't oh, really yeah. see like how the answers that Faramir has in hand are like really valuable. Like you don't want to, you really don't want to use Brawl early because that just gives the Paladin so much opportunity to run away with the board later in the game. Yeah, if, they, if you brawl and they muster, it's a really bad feeling. Yeah, I'm really surprised to see, expecting that this would be like the really, really control pattern. With the, I was expecting like wild pyromancer is equal. It is. I don't know. It is, but seeing how like a knife jugger was in the deck, I, I'm a bit confused now. I mean, I he actually he told me it was control pattern. I didn't. Uh, I didn't ever see it. I didn't see. Is it game, super so. greedy too? Like we've seen some people top out their paladin decks with like Kale is on. Life Coach is actually doing oh, yeah. that, yeah. and they don't mind taking it to the late game. But I haven't, I haven't seen it be super effective in a long time. I mean, KT is really good in mid range decks too because if you're ahead, then you can make a really weird trade and just play KT. Shield block is a huge That's draw there really for, uh, <laughs> for Faramir. Otherwise, like what he was relying on to power up his uh, shield slam was a shield maiden, and like shield maiden and then slamming a Sylvanas is just not a thing you can do. So drawing that shield block there to gain that extra armor to be able to remove it is so huge, especially right. because he now has the answer to the turn seven Doctor Boom into BJH, which, which is Hoy's only target in the deck, I will assume for BJH because most Paladin just run Doctor Boom. Do you like, uh, yeah, I like that play. I was thinking about if you Taskmaster there, a Boombot instead, but this is much better. Yeah, I, I really like uh, Ooh. The, oh, putting man. the Belcher out there. When you're curving out with threats like this <laughs> in, the cur in the control matchups, it's pretty devastating. I mean, so if, he, and if he doesn't, his opponent will play Ysera on curve, too. To be honest, Hoei has no equality for Ysera. He's got, he's got an Owl, so he at least reduces it, oh. its effect off, but... but 412, a 412 is the biggest guy killer. <laughs> yeah, but then again, like, Hoy is just pushing here. He already has Faramir down to 17 and has, like, a pretty good board. He he does this because he knows that the Brawl is already used, so if he builds up a huge board, it's pretty hard for Faramir to actually deal with it. Although we see him having a really great turn with both Cruel, Arnsliff, and Belcher that will really stop the aggression. I like that play instead of Isera because of you just push much harder for the board here. Yeah, I really like it too. You can you can play Isera when you when the board has become somewhat clear and uh, it, it, there's like no rush to get Isera out. That's what I mean. Like when you stabilize, that's when you play Isera. Like right now, he's, he's still trying to get the board under control, yeah. and it looks like it's doing a great job of doing and so. And Armorsmith can give him so much life here. Absolutely. Especially if he was concerned about. The the paladin bursting him down. Uh, th that that's just one of uh, Warrior Control's biggest strengths. That uh, hiding a Belcher, uh, hiding an Arm Swift behind a Belcher, rather, it gives you just like every aggro deck or like any deck that tries to push for damage. Like we're not seeing an aggro deck here from Hoy, but yeah. any deck that tries to push for damage is a su such huge trouble dealing with. Uh, with that, because not only do they have to commit a lot of damage to killing the Belcher, but also they gain life. Uh, gain life meanwhile. That's a really good draw. <laughs> oh yeah, sure is. Now uh, you can, um, yeah, now you can trade for the Tyrion with the Owl. I want to point out here how rewarded the uh, farmer get for like putting a putting an Owl into Warrior Control, which is not really standard these days. Uh, yeah, I mean people haven't. Thought about silence being in warrior deck for a long time. Back in the day, it was like spellbreaker. If you can oh remember yeah, your just back. you have to owl stuff earlier now. Yeah, I actually had an owl in my deck for this tournament. Um, mm. I really like it in warrior. Uh, you just need to silence like mad scientists and even maybe right. lepronomes now. So it's much much better on curve against aggro decks. Owls surprisingly useful because Absolutely. you don't always get the fiery war axe. Especially and even then. Do you Especially fight against, War Axe uh, like a Haunted Creeper? Not really. <laughs> Absolutely not. Especially against Hunter, for example. Because they can't ping it in some way, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's kind of one of the most feeble consecrations you'll ever see. <laughs> Killing off an owl yeah. and a gold share of footmen. He just wants... Uh, yeah, the board control. Yeah, Ooh. and Faramir to use the Death Spite on the oh, Pilot of the Sky Golem here. That is, with the muster in hand, that is oh, a huge heresy. That, that's going to be three draws. That's insane. Oh, Though and they got the best card from this right. era, possibly. Not bad. Not I bad. I assume at this point that this game isn't going to fatigue. 
No, absolutely it's, it's, not. It's yeah. starting to get it's starting to escalate very quickly. Because sometimes in the Harris in the control wear mirror, you have to think about when you Harrison because you can't you can't don't always want to draw two cards ironically. Uh, but here you definitely want to draw as many as possible to just burst advantage your opponent out of the game. Yeah, although, I mean, he's going to try to take away Chu Silver if that's what he goes for because Hoi is relatively co close to killing off the Warrior. Although it's not always guaranteed because, like you said, if your opponent had the ability to pump back up to Alex Straza, how does Paladin win from there because you sacrifice a lot of damage yeah, Ho Hoi, to go Ho to face? Yeah, Hoi is kind of all in on this plan. Like, we saw that with a very, very not, no, not so valuable consecration uh, last turn that is really trying to, uh, trying to push for an try to push the game and end it in like a couple of turns here. I actually... So, and his uh, game, and what it does here is like really consistent to what it's trying to, what it's been I'm trying to do I'm actually not a, I'm not 100% with him on the plan of silencing his era, just because to me, when he consecrates and when he true silvers there, he's signifying that he just wants to kill Faramir, but then he kind of changes plans right away by uh, silencing his era instead of maybe saving it for a sludge belcher. Oh, what are we trying to say is that we're trying to end the game next turn and therefore the, the dream card that you get from Isera won't matter anyway, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. But then again, you went through double Belcher already, so, so oh, it, I it's may really it. unlikely that you actually need to silence something. Mm -hmm. Like, what else but Belcher is there really to... I guess an armor smith, but that like does its job this turn and it's not like it can hide it about a ta this behind is, a taunt anyway. This is really tough for Faramir. But he is going to survive, but it's going to be pretty close. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One life. If Faramir could turn the game around from here, that would be pretty epic. I mean, honestly, uh, Hoei's used both Consecrations and both True Silvers, Sylvanas, Tyrion, and Boom, and a Sky Golem. Yeah. I can't imagine he has much more to go on. I think you just Axe here, right? It, try, try to get end, end the game as soon as possible. You have the... Mm. It is within striking because distance, Because so. you want a Gromash next turn, I think. Or Shield... Actually, yeah. you probably want a Shield Maiden next I, turn. I, I think you have Shield Maiden next turn, and uh, tr you try to finish the game within... Not the next turn, but the turn after yeah, that. With, uh, Grom Isera, with Grom Isera Awakens. Uh, Grom Isera Awakens just so <laughs> much damage. That There's That's 15 damage right of the hand with no other board. Grom and Isera are best friends. Uh, three of Isera's dream cards actually are very, very good with um, uh, at Gromash. An, at, at enraging Gromash, yeah. yeah but Isera not, not just enraging, just letting him through. Yeah. Sorry, Freda? No, that, you're right. I mean, Isera Awakens doesn't exactly fit too well. I mean, the fact is you still push yourself within the same range. You gain five life, you lose five life with the, with the shield main. So... Right now, it's, it's tough because it, he doesn't have a real Gromash Activator unless he can get enough health to make it so that he can Ysera Awakens and push past the, uh, whatever's there. Oh man, this will be the best Quartermaster. <laughs> oh, if he draws it, that's just game yeah. over right there. He can't and clear out the tokens. No, he, he just has to hope that uh, there's no that there's no Quartermaster he, in He can uh, actually... Hand. Yeah, sorry? Y y you, you can Shield Bait on Ysera Awakens, but I... I don't know, th that might be playing the game like a little bit too defensive, I'd say. Yeah. Although you have the you have the option of like you have what you need in hand, I think, to actually end the game with what you already yeah. have. The thing wow. is that th 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 this card in Hoy's hand has been basically in his hand the whole game, hasn't it? Yeah. And uh, so it really signalizes a quartermaster to Faramir, I'd say. Oh, that's huge actually. You think so? It, it I mean, he can it, still it, grab. It, it but doesn't push for more damage, and he really needs it. I mean, from Poe's perspective, now Isera can't kill the 3-3. Three -three. Oh. Yeah. Well, I yeah, mean, he has a Fiery War Axe. Yeah, but he's oh. super oh, low. Man. Well, okay. <laughs> Shield block is really nice, too. But, like, Paladin, even considering this, wouldn't be able to push for the lethal because he has Gromash, and he'd be able to clear the board. Yeah. There's a lot of ways that Warrior could have answered this, too. It's like Gromash, Alex Straza... Or even just drawing shield block. And in this case, Hoy is, or sorry, Faramir is trying to be as defensive as possible while still being yeah. able to threaten to maybe lethal. That's what I like about what he's doing here. Oh, at, whoa. I mean, I don't think we'll see Hoy win next turn, but Faramir can't deal with his board. Uh, well, we'll see. He still has the top of his deck. Oh, well. <laughs> to <laughs> which he, he pays due honor to. He just has to that's rub a his hands I eliminated. a little bit. Clap mm -hmm. twice and do a twirl. Uh, oh. <laughs> let's see what shield block draws. Yeah. Oh. 
That's pretty good when you're at That's one life. That's a really good draw for next turn, but he has to armor up an axe here, which doesn't feel great. His opponent has nine damage, right? He's at nine life, so he's going to have to cross his fingers for no more additional damage. But both consecrations have been used, and right. if I recall correctly, both, both true sillers. Both true sillers. He yeah. has a muster left, though. Oh, but muster doesn't do damage. It, it, it doesn't already do has any damage changes. at the moment. Let's see. Oh, unless he's playing like out of nowhere a big threat like Ragnaros. Oh, would Coghammer do it? Uh, no, Coghammer no, would be one off. Yeah. <laughs> he's so close oh, every yeah. time. Having it's crazy. I mean. Alex Straza doesn't actually save Faramir 100%. If the top card of Hoey's deck is... Um, Quartermaster? Yeah, or Lay on Hands. Oh, Armorsmith. Oh, doesn't do anything this turn. No, you, you, you certainly just have to Alex yourself yeah, this turn. Clearly. Go down to go up to uh, 50. 50. I yeah. like that play as well, because now he's not dead to Quartermaster. It looks like Faramir has... Been able to stabilize yeah, what, this game happening? from one I thought, life. I thought the oh, oh well, there's the okay. on hands. Never mind. Well, I was gonna say I thought <laughs> Paladin was to out card the warrior. Ooh, yeah, most of the time we, we just didn't saw Hoy with the uh, with the cards to do that. Like he didn't draw any lay on hands. He or drew double true silver, and Faramir wasn't really playing minions that died to true silver. So Hoy just pushed for damage with them, and that's like two cards gone, having only dealt damage to his face, which is fine. Faramir went very really low, but. That those cards are kind of gone now. Does something just ding? Do you guys like Boom Armorsmith here? Or yeah, execute as well. Boom yeah, Armor I'm Smith. okay parting ways. Although he did draw three cards off of it, you just have to consider what threats are remaining in the Paladin deck. But you're mentioning it, Christian. That, that he actually used most of his threats by now. Yeah. That Kel'Thuzad is literally the last threat in the Paladin deck, I think. He doesn't have anything on board to take advantage of the KT unless he top decks a quality here. Oh, oh my oh, god. Oh, 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 oh. That is so nice. <laughs> Ooh, and Hoy is known for being a little too cheeky. Farmir is obviously <laughs> not happy to see that. And I mean, well, talk I imagine that he'll tilt more when he sees the KT. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Farmir is actually a really I emotional player. So. Yeah. Wears his heart on his sleeve. Or on the outside of his hoodie. Watch. Watch, <laughs> watch, watch, watch. It's going to be terrible. Be prepared. Oh, man. And then now with all these minions spawning, Boomba's going to be less impactful. I can't believe it. And all of a sudden, we see Oh, oh. Wow, that's well, also a great draw, too. He should use that on a Sylvanas. I really hope that uh, Faramir <laughs> emotes back here. I, I'm disappointed. That was clever. Well, Thank you. I mean, now we've gotten to the point where this is what I actually thought would happen in this matchup, where Paladin can just start grinding the warrior out of the game. I, I, I'm so surprised to actually see this work somewhat, that where it's like all of a sudden switching gears. Well, that equality. It was the lay on hands and the equality that did it. Abs they, absolutely. They just granted him so much reach. That wasn't through damage, but just through pure card advantage. You know, the you were talking about this game wasn't probably going to go to fatigue based off the early game plays, which was, yeah. you know, I was behind you on that, but they're actually pretty deep in their deck. Five and six cards remain on both sides. Well, going to fatigue means a lot of things because you can go to fatigue and, like, some you just start taking one to two damage, but you I'm not sure this game will go to the stage where they're taking five, six damage and they're losing to fatigue. Well, no. I mean, Warrior is also almost out of threats, too. Yeah, I, I can't imagine what else he really has. I think he has another death bite, right? If he has Baron Geddon um, oh. in his deck, I know some players have been playing it recently. But right, Baron Geddon is still really good at dealing with aggro. Um, oh, he's also worried about Quartermaster too, because he hasn't played Quartermaster. He, he's been doing a really good job of playing around Quartermaster by play. He, he, w he killed off uh, Sealer Hand Recruit over the mm. Murloc uh, Tight Collar, I think it's called. Yeah, with Alex uh, uh, Yeah, earlier. It, and just to like, if, if he has Quartermaster, which is likely at this point, it would be like one less damage. So I really like how Farmer is doing a good job of that. But Though with four cards, I can't really see him having more than one Quartermaster. Uh, yeah, like the thing now too is that uh, Faramir knows that he's at a dis disadvantage and uh, he really is just play, play from the board. He can't really play around a lot of things at the yeah. moment. Oh, oh there, there we it see is. it. Well, but I Sylvanas is also still there. I think you just kill off your minions here and then you Quartermaster 1 recruit. Because then you still have... Oh, Can well, you not just uh, let it steal whatever and then you Quartermaster the Oh, yeah, you can make him steal 1-1. One, one. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. I 
glossed over that. Oh, it's because uh, you still have the weapon up, and that yeah. actually becomes useful here. You have to leave the Lilith up, but that's completely fine. Warrior's out of burst, and you're at 24, so... Uh, you just saw the Grob Is there already. a downside um, to quartermastering? I guess it does die to the Lothab pretty easily. Yeah, it but does. But then again, they, I, I think what it's trying to figure out is if he can get more value out of it and if he Ooh. if he's fine just playing a heal bot this turn. But I think you just have to play it here. You can also, oh. if this game does go to fatigue, you can kind of surprise Warrior with the heal bot in the late game. But Ah, you're right. You're right about that. But it's also three damage on the board, which it could end up mounting to be too much pressure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And exactly as you said, Froden, it looks like <laughs> Warrior's just running out of threats now. Well, yeah. Warrior has his own 1-1. One -one. The only <laughs> problem is that Paladin has an infinite source of 1-1s. One -one. Stay strong, Silverhand recruit. You can do this. Well, there's Paladin's Harrison. Yeah, but way too late. There, actually, there is a death spite, but Th there is a death the spite thing you care about most is the damage. Yeah, and I don't see Faramir coming back from this. And also, we saw Hoyer uh, sacrificing his Acolyte of Pain last turn, for example. Yeah, that was really uh, smart. Yeah, meaning that he's like really afraid of how many cards he wants to draw. A yeah. great game there. We, s we saw Hoy uh, going for one ca game plan, sticking to it. And uh, when he saw that that wouldn't work out, he just right. switched gears and won that way instead. He didn't really have a choice, though, when you get the only card in your hand is Lay on Hands. It's like, well, you uh, know, <laughs> I'm facing against Alex Straza and Dr. Boom. I guess I'll draw a quality. I mean, that's, exactly. a, that's a really valuable skill in Hearthstone to be able to just decide this game plan isn't going to work out. Oh, for sure. I should change my strategy to fit what my opponent is trying to do. <laughs> Yeah, there's an entire anime dedicated around doing exactly that action. Believe <laughs> oh. it or not, I'm not even joking. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And Hoy has blonde hair. I mean, it makes all sense. <laughs> so, there it is. Well Our play. Oh, oh, right. There it is. All there right, another is. one. <laughs> one drop right off the top there. He didn't have it initially. Greetings, Leopard Gnome. No classic. cool Taskmaster either for Farmer to take initiative on the board. W one thing that I've noticed is that that I noticed is that. Uh, Faramir kept the shield block in his opening hand. Do we have thoughts uh, on that? Uh, I kind of like it, but at the same time, it's kind of greedy. Yeah, I, I don't like it at all because I, f I feel that you really need the Armorsmith, the Cruel Taskmasters, and the Fiery War Axes to just like. It, shields, shield block is something I use later in the game because. Uh, because I want to stabilize. It's definitely not something I want to play on turn three. And uh, playing, playing early game against. Uh, N not losing in the early game against the uh, Hunter is like your biggest priority for sure. What are you guys' thoughts on keeping Sludge Belcher in this matchup? I, I, I don't do it for uh, the reason I just said. I think yeah. it's actually more reasonable than keeping Shield Block because I think you want to play Shield Block most of the time, even later than you than you play Belcher. Yeah. But I, I, do I do not like it just because the early game is so important. And we can actually see here that Faramir is finding uh, falling behind quite yeah, Quite quickly yeah. here. I agree a lot with if what you, you're saying. If you let... The thing is about Face Hunter, if you let Face Hunter hit more than once with their threats, they get so much value out of these charge minions, and it's just really bad for you. Yeah. You see, if he... Oh, I was just going <laughs> to say, if he doesn't draw at exactly Cruel Taskmaster here, uh, Firebird will be in a lot of trouble, but he skillfully peels it from the top. Notice but the high main in... Uh, Hoey's hand. Yeah, it, it's a hybrid hunter that yeah. we've seen a lot lately. I don't. Not sure I like that owl. It, I, I expect Hoy at this point, since I see a high main, to be running freezing traps. Yeah. And I, I agree that freezing trap is valuable against Warrior, but I'm actually, actually fine uh, freezing uh, Acolyte of Pain at this point. The thing is that Warrior doesn't even need to attack into freezing trap because they can just hide behind stuff like sludge belchers. Yeah. And, and there are actually some creatures that you actually don't want to freezing trap, like Shield Maiden, uh, like Shield Maiden, for example. So I I would actually went for the trap there, but I, I can actually see the merits of this play too. The best feeling is freezing trapping your own anti kill bot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Here we see uh, Hoy just needed some kind of action here to follow up into his time in the next turn and Glaive Soka. It's definitely not bad because it's p pushing for quite a bit of damage here. I do see a juicy Harrison target though. <laughs> but we like, like the thing is, if you Harrison, they just like hit you for two and play a high main. Yeah, um, but Harrison matches up pretty well against high main, and uh, he gets kind of rid of. Oh two yeah, damage. I, 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 for I forgot about the death by there. Oops. 
Yeah. Yeah, now, now this is actually not... Oh, but there's a freezing trap up. Never mind. Oh, yeah, that the matters. high main is protected by this freezing trap, which is what Hoi want or... Yeah, what Hoi wanted to set up for. Well, Farmer actually knows he's played an owl, so he can just sludge belcher here. Or he can uh, do the play I think he's going to do, which is block, task, execute. Oh, yeah. Originally, I thought he was going to go task and then big game hunter to get it on the board, but yeah. this also makes sense, too. Oh, yeah. Especially, he doesn't want to play big game hunter because he, if he doesn't know Hoi's decks, uh, this might be explosive still. Fair enough. That, uh, he is definitely playing around freezing with him, not yeah, the he holds back. Oh, yeah, attack. but it's kind of a hedge. Absolutely. I like the shield block. You're, if, if you don't block there, you will be in range of a kill command, which is absolutely something you want to avoid and uh, next at every cost. And the turn after next turn, I think you're going to start armoring up almost every turn. Oh, so, so, so that you can play the Belisher and armor up next uh, turn, yeah. followed by shield made and armor up. That just goes perfectly. <laughs> well, what it does is it negates the hunter's hero power, which is really effective uh, to try to push the, for the win usually, but in this yeah. scenario, you equalize. Hoei can actually unleash and kill Taskmaster if he wants to. It doesn't seem too strong when he's trying to Taskmaster, but if he wants to bounce, if he doesn't want to freeze Taskmaster, uh, that's I, a possibility. I don't think I like. I think I'd rather just trade with a high end if I'm doing that and like get in those hero powers there because like every single point of damage counts at this point. Yeah, yeah. what I do like about uh, saving the Hound Masters or sorry, not the Hound Masters, the unleash the Hounds is the fact that Kill Command is in your hand. Yeah. And if you lose those beasts on board, kill command is only going to be three damage. Yeah. Although it's still pretty hard to clear those hy uh, hyenas, especially with freezing trap out. I, oh. I actually think not hero powering may have been a mistake. That's so important here. Uh, Hoy, Hoy seems to be on the uh, Hoy seems to be on the plan that this game is ending in one or two turns, and therefore. I think Hoy is in the mindset where this kill command plus whatever he draws in the next turn or two might be the finishing blow. I think Faramir disagrees. I mean, he doesn't want this game to end in <laughs> ten in one or two turns. He'd he like to disagree, but you know, <laughs> like so many great arguments in my life, it's not my choice to make. I mean, Axe. Oh, and Sludge Belcher. He's he's giving him a chance. I mean, right now, another piece of damage, direct damage, like Quick Shot, ends the game. I mean, he has Kill Command, or he can just draw Eagle Horn Bow. And oh, Hoey advances. Yeah, that, there that it is. It. <laughs> well, pretty clear here in Faramir is not going to be able to stand a chance. Took a little bit too much damage. And like you said, a combination of greedy plays ends up costing him. In I this think match. that was a misplay. He should have Arcane Golem the Sludge Belcher token. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I, I would have liked it for the style points, but Hoy ends up advancing. You know what? He's with the mix of decks that control Paladin being able to win. And you know what? Most players are saying control Paladin or. Just, you know, things in general that aren't Hunter, Warlock, Patron, and, and maybe like a Druid. It's very impressive to see him still this far with the Control Paladin. I uh, mean, yeah. sorry, I think, I think it's just a greedier midrange Paladin, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, he told you someone. Who did he tell? It was a Control Paladin? Oh, he told you? He told me. I, I don't know. Oh, maybe he's <laughs> trying to throw you off. Oh, man. Like, yeah, I'm playing <laughs> dragons. Like, Dragon Cons <laughs> are in my Paladin deck. Oh, one, <laughs> one thing I want to take away from this match yeah. that Hoy did that was something that I really admire what was how he went with his game plans and he really stuck to them to the end. Uh, we saw him, we see a lot of players do that where they like are somewhere in between two game plans and that usually doesn't end up well but Hoy really had a plan in mind and uh, executed them really really well and I was actually really impressed by his play all of this series. Faramir actually uh, did sort of did it sort of differently. I think he was on the plan where he, that he was playing around Freezing Trap by not attacking but then he suddenly decided to attack into it I, I think it was more of the that he didn't have a choice at that point. Yeah, and uh, also he wanted to proc it before Bo comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fine. So, all right, well, uh, that wraps up the series. Thank you so much, guys, for stopping by. Uh, we don't have time for an interview. In fact, we have to take a break and get ready for our next match, which I believe is uh, Tice up against Frezar. And that's an awesome one because uh, we haven't seen Frezar perform too well, and he's a Swedish player that people often forget. You know, Orange taking the spotlight all the time, <laughs> you know, trying to make it as the up-and-coming Swede. But Frezar is a great player. Tice, of course, has been a uh, around for a while. It was a year oh, ago yeah. since he made his debut, and I think we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have more Hearthstone action here at DreamHack Summer 2015.